Hi everybody, I'm Rick Warren, pastor at Saddleback Church in Lake Forest, California, and I've got a question for you. How's your faith? Is it strong or is it weak? Is it steady or is it stretched? It's a very important question uh, to be able to answer because Jesus said everything is possible for the person who has faith. He also said according to your faith, it will be done to you. In other words, you get to choose how much God blesses your life. God says, if you'll trust me, if you'll believe in me, if you'll have faith in me, I will bless you. In fact, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. So there's a lot writing on your faith. Now let me ask you that question again. How's your faith? Would you like your faith to be stronger? Well, I hope so, because that's why we're going to do this study together. You see, faith is like a muscle. It needs to be exercised. It needs to be developed. And God uses a predictable pattern and process to build your faith. I call it the six phases of faith. Now, once you understand these six phases, you're going to be able to cooperate with God in the process of strengthening your faith, building your character, and experiencing the great adventure of life in Jesus Christ. You know, as a pastor, the question I'm asked probably more than any other question is this. Pastor, why is this happening to me? I just don't understand it. I don't get it. I'm, I'm ready to give up. Why? You see, when you don't understand God's six phases of faith, you get discouraged in tough times. In fact, you may even become resentful or even depressed. You're certainly going to worry. You may become fearful about the future, but most of all, you won't be able to cooperate with what God is doing in your life. On the other hand, when you understand what we're going to look at, these six phases of faith that God takes every one of us through, and he takes you through them over and over and over, by the way, then you're going to say, oh, okay, I understand now I'm in stage four or I'm in stage five or I'm in stage six or stage two and you can relax and you can understand what's going on and you're not going to get discouraged when the times are tough. Now in this session, I want to just introduce you to all six phases. We're going to give you a little overview and then in succeeding uh, uh, issues, we're going to go to a deeper process. We're going to look at each phase of faith in the coming sessions. Now, how does God build my faith? Well, the first phase of faith is what I call dream. Now, God always starts with a dream. Nothing happens until somebody starts dreaming. You've got to have a dream. You've got to have an idea, a vision, a goal, a target. God wants to work in your life, but he does it starting with a dream. He gives you a dream about what he wants to do and the impact he wants to make uh, through your life in the world. Now, there are a lot of examples of this in the Bible. God gave Noah the dream of building an ark. God gave Abraham the dream of being the father of a great nation. He gave Joseph the dream of, of being a leader who would save his people. And all through Scripture, we find that God always starts with this dream. He gave David the dream of building the temple of God. And he gave Nehemiah the dream of building the wall around Jerusalem. And he gave Paul the dream of going to Rome. As I said, nothing happens until first you start dreaming. Now, how do you know when a dream is from God or you just made it up? I mean, how do you know if it's God speaking to you or it's the, <laughs> the lasagna you had last night? Well, here's how you can know God's dream it will always require faith. You see, the Bible says God is able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or even dream of infinitely beyond our highest prayers, our desires, our thoughts, our hopes. That's Ephesians 3.20. You see, if a dream comes from God, it's going to be so big, you cannot do it on your own. Did you hear that? If a dream comes from God, it is so big, you can't do it on your own. You can only do it by faith, because if you could do it on your own, you wouldn't need faith. And if you don't need faith, you can't please God, because as I said, the Bible says in Hebrews eleven six, 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, the second way to know that a dream is from God is that God's dream never contradicts his word. In other words, he's not going to give you a dream of leaving your family and kids and moving to Hollywood to be a star, because that's not a dream from God. God's dream never contradicts what he has already said in his written word. But he does start with a dream. However, a dream is just the first phase along the line of faith. Once God has given you the dream, then you move to phase two, and phase two in the six phases of faith is a decision. 
Now, the decision phase is when you begin to actually do something about your dream. Nothing's going to happen in your dream until you wake up and begin to put it into action. You got to make a decision. You got to say, I'm going to go for it. You know, for every 10 dreamers in the world, there, there's one decision maker. A lot of people have dreams, but they never do anything about those dreams. A lot of people have dreams, but they never get to this second phase to make the decision to go for it. We'll talk about that in this series, how to make that decision. During the decision phase, you have to do a couple things. First, you have to invest. You have to make the decision to invest your time, your money, your reputation, your energy. This is where you decide to lay it on the line, take the plunge, and go for it. It's where you say, okay, God, you told me to do this, and in faith, I'm stepping out, I'm walking on the water, I'm going to go for it. You got to invest. The second thing you have to do in the decision phase is you have to let go of security, and that's even harder. You see, you can't move forward in faith and hold on to the past at the same time. When God told Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of a great nation, in order for Abraham to do that, Abraham had to leave his home for an unknown destination. He didn't know where he was going. Moses, to follow God's dream, had to let go of his quiet life as a shepherd in order to lead God's people into freedom. Peter had to get out of the boat in order to walk on water. If you want to walk on water, you got to get out of the boat. You know, a great example of this is a trapeze artist at a, at a circus. You, you've seen this. They swing out on one bar and then they grab a hold of the other bar and swing to the other side. But the bars are far enough away from each other that you can't hang on to the first and grab the other one at the same time. At some point, you have to let go of the first trapeze bar in order to move over to grab to the next one. And for that split second, you're not holding on to anything. You're flying in midair. Your, whole, your feet are <laughs> firmly planted in midair, holding on to nothing. You ever been there in your career? Yeah, I'm sure you have. When you're leaving one job and you're waiting for another and nothing in between, and you're 100 feet up in the air with no net below and nothing to hold on to, but if you don't let go and you grab onto the vision that God wants you to have, you're just going to swing back in the old direction. And only you won't just swing all the way back. Have you noticed that? You swing back with lower and lower velocity until finally you're just hanging there with only one way out, down. <laughs> God gives you a dream, but you have to make the decision to let go of the dream and to pursue it. Now, once you move through phase two, you come to third phase, the third phase, and this one is one that's a little bit more difficult. It is delay. Delay is stage three in the six phases of faith. God will not fulfill your dream immediately. Why? Because it wouldn't take any faith. You see, there is always a delay. Listen to this. There is always a waiting period between dream and fulfillment. You know, God says in the Old Testament book of Habakkuk, these things that I plan for you won't happen right away. Slowly, steadily, surely the time approaches when the vision will be fulfilled. If it seems slow, do not despair, for these things will surely come to pass. Just be patient. This is God talking to some of you directly. They will not be overdue a single day. That's Habakkuk 2, 3 in the Living Bible. You see, in this phase three, you start asking the when question. When, Lord, when are you going to answer my prayer? When are you going to remove that barrier? When is the dream going to be fulfilled? When is everything going to fall into place? It's the waiting stage. Have you ever been in a hurry when God wasn't? Yes. That's the hardest thing in the world to do. God, you know, God can really be irritating sometimes, can't he? Because you're ready, but God isn't. Or you think you're ready, but God knows you're not. You see, God often takes a delay. In fact, he always takes a delay. Why? Because he wants you to work on you. And he wants to work on you before he works on the project. God has to make some changes in you before he can bring the fulfillment of that dream. Now, this is a principle taught all through Scripture. Noah waited 120 years from the time that he started building the ark until it began to rain. That's a long time to wait. 
Abraham told he'd be the father of a great nation, but he didn't even have a child until he was 99 years old. That's a long time to wait. Jesus waited 30 years in a carpenter shop before he started his ministry. Now, if Abraham and Jesus and Moses and everybody else had to go through the waiting period, why shouldn't we? You'll go through phase three too, delay. You see, waiting teaches us to trust God. It teaches us that his timing is perfect. Did you hear that? God's timing is perfect. And, and we have to learn that there's a difference, and this is really a mark of maturity, there's a difference between no and not yet. Your children have to learn that, you have to learn that. Many times God says to you, not yet, and you're thinking he's saying no. He's not saying no. You see, that's why the most common reaction in the delay phase is doubt. We start doubting. And we think, well, maybe I missed God's vision. Maybe I did something wrong. But a delay is not a denial. Get that. A delay never destroys God's purpose for your life. Never, never, never. The purpose of the delay phase is actually a part of the plan. It's to teach you that you can trust God and that you can be patient with his timing and that his timing is perfect. So how do you handle the waiting rooms of life? Some of you are in the waiting rooms right now. Well, it reveals your faith. Once you start moving through the delay period, you're going to come to phase four. And now you come to fourth phase and it's difficulty. You say, oh no, we moved from dream to decision to delay and now difficulty? Yes. You see, not only do you get to wait, when you, uh, but you're going you're gonna to have problems while you wait. <laughs> it's part of God's plan. Now there are two primary kinds of problems, circumstances and critics, and both of these will delay and add difficulty to your dream. When God gives you a dream, there are going to be circumstances that hold you back and critics that put you down to make things difficult. I mean, imagine the difficulty Noah had. How'd you like that to build a floating zoo? People said he was, you know, nuts. I mean, well, you know, imagine being uh, Noah's kids. Well, you know, what's your dad doing out there in the front yard? He's building an ark. How about Joseph? Joseph had a dream of becoming a ruler, then he's sold into slavery by his jealous brothers, falsely accused of rape, thrown into prison, and forgotten by everybody. You talk about difficulties on top of delay. After Moses died, Joshua led the people into the promised land, but when they got there, they discovered it was full of giants, big people, much stronger than they were. And even in the promised land, there are problems, because God is working on your faith and he's working on you. Why does God allow this? Well, the Bible says this. At present time, you may be temporarily harassed by all kinds of trials. It's no accident. It happens to prove your faith, which is infinitely more valuable than gold. That's 1 Peter 1, 7. Now, finally, when you get through the delay and you get through the difficulties, you come to the next phase, the difficulties become so bad, you've come to your limit. You've tried everything. You've exhausted all your options, and now you've reached the fifth phase of faith, which is dead end. <laughs> you say, oh, thanks, Rick. Thanks a lot. Well, dead ends are part of God's plan for your life. The situation deteriorates from difficult to impossible, and now it looks hopeless. It looks like there's no way out. It looks like there's no alternative. And it, uh, it, I want to just say right now, if you're watching this and you're at this stage, congratulations because you're in, in good company. Even Paul, the, probably the greatest Christian ever lived next to Jesus himself, went through dead ends. In fact, one time he wrote, at that time we were completely overwhelmed. The burden was more than we could bear. You ever felt like that? He said, in fact, we, we told ourselves that this was the end. Yet we believe now that we had this sense of impending disaster so that we might learn to trust not in ourselves, but in God who can raise the dead. That's 1 Corinthians 1, 8 and 9. Now, if God can raise people from the dead physically, he can raise people from the dead emotionally. He can raise a dead marriage. He can resurrect a dead career. He can resurrect a dead health problem. He can make things better. And if God can raise the dead, he can do anything. Now, at the dead end stage, you start asking, what's going on, Lord? Did I miss your will? Have I missed your vision? 
Did I just make up this dream? Is it just something I thought up? Now, the best example of this is when Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt. They had had 10 plagues uh, in Egypt, and Pharaoh finally says, okay, you guys, get out of here. Good riddance. Take off. Leave. And the children of Israel leave. But one day later, Pharaoh changes his mind, and he starts coming after them with the, with the, the power and velocity of the uh, Egyptian army. Now, the children of Israel at the Red Sea, and, and it, they're, they're mountains on either side, and the Red Sea is in front of them, and the enemy army is in hot pursuit behind them, ready to kill them. This is what you call God's cul-de-sac. You've been in it many times, and you're going to be in it many more times in the future, where it seems like there's no way out. Now, the Bible says that the people were terrified and they started complaining. They said, we should have just stayed as slaves in, in Egypt rather than die at the Red Sea. Now think about that. We should have stayed as slaves? Do you know, some people actually prefer living in bondage that they know rather than taking the risk of something they don't know. And they don't want to take a, a risk of faith. They'll put up with a bad situation in a marriage, in a career, in a church, in, in, in a job or whatever, uh, that is certainly not God's will. Rather than step out in faith, take the risk, and trust God for a miracle. Now, it's interesting in uh, the book of uh, Exodus that the place where the children of Israel were hemmed in between these mountains and the Red Sea in front of them was called Baal Zephon. Baal Zephon. Do you know what that means? It means God's hidden treasure. <laughs> they, they're in a cul-de-sac and it looks like no way out, but they're exactly where God wanted them to be. Now, if you're in a dead end right now, in any area of your life, you're exactly where God wants you to be. God knows where you are. He's got your number. He knows every hair on your head. He put you in that dead end for a purpose. You need to learn to say, Dead ends are part of God's plan for my life. Why? Because you're going to have a lot of them. You're just in phase five. Now, what is the best response to a dead end? Well, the answer is faith, expectation and faith. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 1.10, he has rescued us and so he'll rescue us in the future and we're confident that he'll continue to rescue us. Over in Psalms 27, verse 13, it says, I'm expecting the Lord to rescue me again. So once again, I'm going to see the goodness, his goodness to me. You need to expect the Lord to rescue you when you're in the dead end. A positive, confident expectation that God will rescue you is the key to moving out of phase five, dead end, into the sixth phase of faith, which is deliverance. Now we get to the good stuff. In the end, God comes in and he delivers us. He does a miracle. He provides a solution. He gives us the answer. He fulfills the dream. And in Moses' case, God splits the Red Sea. In Abraham's case, he and Sarah miraculously conceive a child. In Joseph's case, all of a sudden the dream comes true. And in a single day, he's released from the dungeon and he's made second in command of Egypt. Now, of course, the greatest miracle from dead end to deliverance, is when Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. God loves to bring crucifixions and turn them into, into resurrections. He loves to turn uh, hopeless situations into deliverance. Why? Because he gets the credit. He gets the glory. He specializes in turning hopeless situations into miracles. So the best response to a dead end is to simply keep on expecting God to act, keep on believing, keep on praying, keep on trusting. And let me ask you a very pointed question. Knowing what you're going through right now, what are you expecting God to do in your life? What are you expecting God to do in your life? You know, without even knowing you, I can tell you what he's doing. God is doing exactly what you expect him to do. Because the Bible tells us that every time God moves out of heaven and moves on earth and does a miracle, it's because somebody believed. The Bible says, according to your faith, it will be done to you. 
This is why this series, The Six Phases of Faith, may be the most important series you've ever gone through. Now let's just do a little review. I'm giving you an overview of where we're going in these six sessions. First, what is the dream God has given you? That's phase one. Now if you don't have a dream, you need to start praying because God has a dream for your life. You just need to key into it. You say, God, give me your dream. You don't make up your own dream. You, you pray and you say, God, what is your dream for my life? If you don't have God's dream for your life, friend, you're not really living. You're just existing. God didn't plan that for your life. He wants you to live the full life of abundance that he intended for you. And that means fulfilling the purpose that you were created for. When you discover that purpose, that dream that God wants you to have, then you go for it and you make the decision. Now, some of you are there right now. You're in phase two. You have the dream from God, but you haven't stepped across the line that you haven't made the decision to go for it. And I hope in this series, you're going to stop sitting on the fence because God's word for you at phase two is real simple. Go for it. Take it on. Move out. You got to move it, move it. <laughs> Some of you have made that decision and now you're at phase three and you, you got the dream, you made the decision and what happened? Big delay. Uh, you know, you've made that decision, but it is being delayed and you're asking God, when Lord, when is it going to happen? Why haven't my prayers been answered? Why haven't, why haven't I seen any progress? That's okay. You didn't miss God's will. You're in God's waiting room. Don't take a detour. Don't take a shortcut. Don't get ahead of God. Wait for him to open the right door or you'll go through the wrong one. Some of you have gone through the delay and you're now in phase four and you've got difficulties. So let me ask you, what difficulties are you facing right now while you're waiting for God's dream to be fulfilled in your life? This is a test. God says, I know exactly what you're going through. I see it. I'm watching. Don't think I've forgotten you. I haven't, I haven't forgotten you. you. This is just part of the plan. You're in the difficulty say. Some of you have actually made it to phase five, and right now you're thinking, I've hit the wall. I'm at the dead end. I'm ready to give up. Well, you're right where God wants you to be, and you're right where this series is going to take you on to deliverance. So keep on believing. Don't give up. You're on the verge of phase six, and phase six is deliverance. You see, you've got to expect and trust God to deliver you. He will. Remember, I've said it now, this is the third time. According to your faith, it will be done unto you. God is faithful. And what he promises to do, he will do. Where God guides, God provides, but it doesn't happen overnight. You've got to go through all six phases. Dream, decision, delay, difficulty, and finally dead end, the death of a vision, and then it comes to deliverance. Now I've given you a lot to talk about in your small group, but I want to pray with you before you get started with your discussion time as we start what may be the most important series you've ever been through. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you that you don't just put us on earth to wander around, to just drift, but that you actually have a dream for our lives. Lord, many of us haven't had that dream because we've been afraid to, to believe, to risk, to take faith. And uh, others of us have gotten side uh, sidelined or detoured by our dream for our lives instead of trusting your dream. Help us in this series to hear clearly from you what is your plan and purpose and dream for our lives. And then God, give us the courage to make the decision to go for it, to be willing to invest time, money, energy, effort, and all that's going on. Help us to be ready to uh, let go of security, like that trapeze artist who hangs in midair for that split section, second. Help us to, to uh, grab onto the other side, but in that moment of delay uh, that we come to next, that we'll not get discouraged. And Father, for those who are facing difficulties and those who are facing even a dead end right now, may they hang on 
and get to deliverance. May they not give up and die in the desert, but may they enter the promised land. I pray, Father, that you'll strengthen all of our lives with faith in this series. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.